uh, you know, what I try to do, I look at the market each year as a 12 inning ball game. And I know I've got a long time. I've got a year to get to put down my return. So I'm never in a hurry. So in the beginning, I'm just trying to not lose money. Okay. Make some profit so I can finance my risk going forward. So I can finance more aggressive trading and figure out what's the theme. What's going on here? What's the technical theme? What's the overall theme? And what's the technical theme? Because sometimes you'll get, for instance, 1995. I didn't start getting heavily invested until the market was in new high ground in April of 95. It was one of my biggest years ever. I was up over 400% that year. There was all power play high tight flags. Just, I called it the year of the high tight flag. There was tons of powerful, powerful setups. So I saw this proliferating and they were working. And I just got super aggressive in all these power plays. Um, you can go back to 1990, going into 91. That was the year of the big cup with handle. Matter of fact, Investors Business Daily had a front page. Um, it said, cup with handles proliferate. That was their headline. And then they showed all these charts in the stocks and the news of all these cup with handles. It was Microsoft, Home Depot, Philip Morris. Back then, some of these were actually mid-cap names. They weren't big companies, believe it or not. Um, and they were all breaking out of these big cup with handle bases. So that was a theme. Um, you know, recently, you know, we saw in 2021, the theme was pop and drop. That, at least that was what I called it. <laughs> um, it, it, it was pop and drop. You had lots of stocks that came out of bases and lots of them broke out and actually went for one, two, three days, sometimes five, seven days, and they go up anywhere between five, 10, 15, 20%, but then they'd fall apart. So that was the theme. I latched onto that theme around February. And then by March, I really started to say, okay, this is the theme that I'm sticking with until it stops working. And that's how I compounded that big return. I didn't, I'm gonna tell you right now, my goal, my, you know, my, my, oh, I should say my minimum goal, what I wanted to accomplish in the US investing championship, I set out to make a triple digit return. That was my goal. I said, look, if I don't win it, if I do a triple digit return, at least it's super respectful. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a huge return. And I'm still in the, in the, uh, you know, of, of doing what I've done in the past with those triple digit returns. That was my goal. My goal, of course, I wanna win it. And I, and I thought I could win it, but what, I don't know. You know, there's a, there's a lot of great traders out there. Some of them in that contest that I taught. Um, so it, it was anybody's anybody's game, any anybody's contest to win. But I latched on to that. For, for me, it was fortunate that that theme was that rapid compounding theme that works great for me. And I was able to really compound um, those returns a, 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 a lot during throughout the year with big positions. Perfect. And you led me right into the investing championship. So Richard, let's bounce back and forth with questions on this. My first question is, how did you get involved with this? And why did you get involved with it? And what's been the experience? You're saying the investment championship? Yes, sir. So back in the 80s, the U.S. investing championship was was very prestigious. Um, and it's it's making a comeback now, which is great. Um uh, David Ryan, of course, won it three times. I went to a seminar and met David Ryan. I was very impressed with David and, and uh, William O'Neill. And he was, you're, you would get your picture on the in the front of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it was, like I said, it was a pretty big deal. Uh, Barron's back then, that was all you had. You know, Wall Street Journal, Barron's, there was a few publications. It wasn't like now where you've got 8 million outlets. Um, it's no big deal to have your, your, you know, your picture plastered on something and to be the... Uh, uh, you know, featured in a story. Back then it was huge. You know, if you got featured in the story, only a very few people could, you know, because it was so few publications, that only so many people could get featured in a story like that or on the front page. So I saw David Ryan won it three years in a row. And then, of course, I read um, David Ryan, Larry Height, who was one of my main guys that I uh, modeled a lot of what I do after, which he happens to be one of my very good friends now. And I speak with him all the time. He's the most, one of the most wonderful men, men you ever want to meet. Um, um, uh, my goal was to be like that, be like those guys, you know, was to, my goal was actually to break the records. When I met, when I read Paul Tudor Jones in Market Wizards, I said, I want to break Paul Tudor Jones record. That's my goal. I, he did four years of triple digits and his fifth year was 99 point, I think 4%. My goal is to do a hundred percent a year uh, average for, or a hundred percent a year each year uh, minimum for five consecutive years. And that's what I set out to do. My goal was to 
win the U.S. Investing Championship. You know, my goal was to be the next market wizard. I didn't never thought they were going to write another market wizard book. I didn't know that at the time, but you know, I certainly wanted to be of that caliber. Um, it just so happened that you know I ended up entering the U.S. Investing Championship in '97 and I won. It just so happens that. Jack Schwager wrote another book and asked me to be in it. So 24 years later, um, Norm Zeta, you know, starts the contest, uh, or, or when I entered, it was 24 years later, I guess, 1997. I went back in 21. Um, I entered against everybody's advice. You know, um, everybody I know uh, said, what are you, crazy? I mean, that's, that's stupid. You know, you have, not, you have all everything to lose, nothing to gain. You're already, you know, known around the world, um, you know, if you – you're expected to do well. If you don't do well, they're going to say, see, it was a flash in the pan. So that made me want to do it even more. Um, so so I, I did it because I wanted to show not, nothing about me personally, but just to show that what I do is timeless. It's timeless and that anybody can do what I do. It, it, if you if you read my books and you and you work hard, that it still works and it's always going to work. It's never going to stop working because the principles that I am uh, teaching forward are timeless and they're never going to, they're never going to not work. Perfect. So I think I'll ask the next question. So Mark, um, last year, uh, it seemed like you were training incredibly aggressively. So I love to hear kind of the specifics when you would enter a position, um, how you kind of incorporated leverage into, uh, you know, right as the stock's going through the buy point, how do you use leverage to increase your returns? And what was kind of a typical position size for you to take last year um, as you try to concentrate into your best ideas? Well, so very simply, a progressive exposure I use not only on a daily basis, but also on an intraday basis. So let's say, you know, in the morning I go into a few trades and they're smaller, but they're working and I'm and I'm profitable. Um I might get more aggressive now because things are working, of course. So it's always on the heels of success. Um, that's the main thing that would get me more aggressive. And also on the heels of success of closed trades that would maybe happened in previous days and weeks and months. So for instance, you know, if I have a great week, you know, I may be more aggressive that next week or if I have a great month, um, you know, I might start that next month being more aggressive as opposed to you know, if I had a terrible month, well, I'm going to be I'm going to be going super, super light and just trying to rebuild uh, very, very slowly and try not to dig any deeper in the hole. So that's sort of the big, you know, the big picture around or the, the, the big thinking about around getting aggressive um, at times. I mean, believe it or not, you know, I wasn't aggressive that much as far as on average, on average, I was in smaller positions and in cash a lot of times. But when I did get aggressive, when things were working, you know, I would take some really big positions. And when I say big positions, I was forex leveraged my whole account sometimes in one name. So, but the way I looked at it was, it's like it's like with the um, with sports, professional sports or the NFL. You have to take steroids because the guy on the other side of the, the linebacker on the other side, the, the, the guy that's facing you, he's on steroids. So you can't compete unless you're you're taking the performance enhancing drugs um, or you're going to get mauled. Well, when you get in a contest like that, you got to realize that there's guys that are willing to put their whole account in one name and shoot for the moon and they might get lucky and they might get lucky you know, right at the end or, you know, or, or enough where it gets them such a lead. So you're going to have to be, you know, to super aggressive. It's like the Olympics, you know, the, the competition is so tight that, you know, you have, everything's got to be perfect and you've got to be at your absolute top performance because the difference between the winners are going to be tenths of a second. And that's how I felt. At least that was the respect that I gave the other traders. 